Uh, before we take a look at a few new measurement types that we've enabled, uh, let's take a look for just a second at how this coffee maker works. Uh, I'm going to hide that side panel and let's come look down here at this little assembly on the side here. Uh, we're going to put grounds up in here and, and, and grind those guys that's going to pour down into this area. And, um, and then let me hide this as well. We're going we're gonna to see this kind of a function here. Uh, as we come in and look at this, we've got um, right in here, this guy. We've got a little product template on this part right here to help us just illustrate how this works. Okay, And so as we do that, uh, this little assembly here is going to start open and ready to fill with, with, uh, with the grounds over here. Right, so that that grounds will will come out of the chute and fall down. Uh, actually, not not quite yet. We're still open <laughs> at this point. Um, I'm going to just step through these steps I'm using a parameter table here to to exercise some expressions and move some things around to to illustrate how this works. But we're going to close that orange door down there, okay? First, and at that point we're ready to fill, right? And we can again fill that with with the the, the grounds. And, uh, and then we can close this chamber here, right? And uh, you notice there's a little gasket on that chamber there. And as we close the gasket, we're now watertight there. And uh, once that chamber is closed, then we can swing it around over here, right? And the, the brown part on the top right here is, uh, we're going to look at this in a little more detail in a second, but this is what we're going to squeeze it through. <laughs> and uh, we're going to inject some water over here. The water is going to come, come uh, get injected there. And that will uh, then start to press, right? Once we've got the water in there, we can press that through there. We've got that all the way closed. Then uh, we're done making the, the, the coffee. The coffee's going to come out of this little spout and come over and go into the cup. Then we can retract the chamber there. Uh, open the door down here. And, uh, and then we have a, a garbage hopper down here underneath, right? So at that point, we can eject the, the grounds that'll be down in there. And, uh, and once we do that, then we can retract the press and, uh, and we get you back here where we're, we're open and ready to do another, another shot, right? So that's, that's just how it works. Um, let's take a look now at uh, a couple new measurements. Uh, they're going to be relevant in the context of this little, this little assembly right here. Okay. Um, this first one was a long time request that we were, um, finally able to implement. I'm going to open up this little part right here and use this to, to illustrate it. Okay. So as we go in to do this measurement here, um, I'm going to make sure angle is on. For, for a long time, we've talked about um, the concept that as we do measurements, we select points and, and then, or select objects or points. And as we do this, we'll, we'll tell you what we know, right? So if we come and we select, say, a, a first point here, um, all we know about that really is a location. And so we'll tell you about the point, right? Uh, if we select a, a second location out there, now we, we know a distance between those two points, right? And that's, that's relevant. Now, for a long time, I've asked about a third point. You know, if I've got a third point, what, what can I know? <laughs> right. And, uh, and, and, and the answer I'm usually driving for is an angle. Right. So if I know, if I know this, this is first one is the vertex and I've got kind of one leg and a, and a second leg here, I can measure with three points. I can measure an angle right now. While that's the, ang the answer I've wanted, <laughs> I've commonly got the answer. You could measure a circle <laughs> with those three points. Right. And actually that's what we've done <laughs> in this release finally. So you'll notice that there's actually a new one, a uh, new result here under the curve edge. Uh, and so with those three points selected, what we can get here also, I'm going to turn off the angle, is, um, as I just mentioned, as, is a circle, right, that passes through those three points. And we can do this, choose either the radius or the diameter here uh, of that circle, and, uh, and also get the center, right? The center of that circle, we can actually save that center as a point if we want to out there. If we save the, the measurement, of course, that'll, that'll create an associative point out there at the center of that circle. So again, very handy for finding uh, very much like this bolt centers, for instance, um, if you've got non-parameterized geometry and you, you want to uh, recreate the center or, or put some feature at the center of the bolt, the bolt circle, 
uh, the center of, of some set of set of features that, that describe a circle, then uh, then it's very easy to do easy to do that now. Okay, all right. Uh, with that, let's go back here to the main assembly and talk about two more new measure types that are really cool. Um, these are these were suggested by a customer recently, and they're surprisingly useful. <laughs> I, I yeah, I encourage you to take a look at these and and find ways that you can use them because they're they're really really quite interesting. Um, what we're gonna do here, uh, we've had for some a, a couple of releases now the ability to measure say a minimum distance not just to a line but but to the extended line right to kind of the virtual extension of the line uh, more like a datum access right but we can do that with a with a line and um and and the next kind of the next step down there is this concept of measuring um we for instance here we can measure here for instance between say this arc right here that's the edge of this blue solid right and say the planar face on the top of this this guy down here now what this is giving us of course at this point let me set my rotation center right there there we go um, this is giving us a minimum distance between these two that's kind of at a diagonal right here right and that's good um, this is in that retracted position right now and what i'm really curious about is kind of the clearance as this is swinging around down here are we okay right are we are we going to miss the surface here uh, is that going to be that, that going to be all right? Um, I can do that by building in a bunch of constraints and moving this around and actually getting it where it needs to go. But I also now uh, can do this. Uh, this, of course, is showing us the minimum distance. And there are a couple of new measurements here that are available. If I've picked something that's an arc, right, uh, to start with, then I'm going to get this minimum distance to an arc extension as one of the optional results here. And what this is going to do is kind of create the, the virtual extension of that arc edge right there. And, and let me measure this minimum distance, right? Without moving this body or without creating construction geometry, it'll create that virtual extension of the arc and, and give me the minimum distance between the, the top face that I'd selected here and that extended arc, which is pretty cool, right? Um, similarly, <laughs> if the other object I pick is planar, like this, right, then I also get this last one here, which is the minimum distance perpendicular to uh, the arc extension. So this is going to take into account both the arc nature of the first object and the planar ob nature of the second object, right, or vice versa. You can pick them in any order. But this is going to give me this result here, right, where I've got a planar result that's often something I'm a clearance plane here right that I want to make sure I don't hit and, and as I'm swinging here now here I've got not just the minimum diagonal distance but I've got the minimum vertical distance so I know I've got almost five millimeters of clearance between the bottom of the the blue part as it swings around and the the top of this the top of this uh this receptacle down here right so those are pretty cool right again we've got that that minimum distance to the arc extension out there the minimum distance was clear back here, right? Because <laughs> we we uh, before we before we move anything, uh, and then again that arc extension will extend the arc. We can get the virtual extension there, and then this perpendicular arc to arc extension gives us that that combination of of that extension of the arc plus the the perpendicular uh, measurement from the planar object that we selected here. Okay, so that one's pretty cool. Um, all right, let's go back here and um, look at one last thing. Uh, this last one is another one that has been requested a lot. <laughs> and I think you're gonna be really excited about this one here. I know I am. Um, as we go to create um, measurement annotations, in fact, we could do that with the one we just had. Um, so let's do these in reverse order, just so we see it working. There's our planar one, and then we'll, we'll pick our edge up here. There we go. And we can get those same results, right? Picked in the opposite order. That's fine. Um, when we go to create, for instance, a minimum distance here, save this and create an annotation, right? One of the things that has been requested for a long, long time <laughs> is to get annotations that are more like the old ones <laughs> in the sense that they're flat to screen and that we can have a background on them, right? So they're easier to read. And so what you're going to see now is we save this measurement to make this associative 
and apply this here, we've got the ability now to do this kind of annotation now, right? Where we've got a flat to screen annotation. You see that that's rotating with the, with the view as we move around. And uh, it also, there we go, let's come in here and do it. And then we can see that a little better, right? So numbers burning through, we've got the background there on that. And uh, again, this is um, remaining flat to screen all the time, right? Which, uh, which is, is great. Um, the PMI team did a, an enhancement for us here to allow us to do this. And, and we're very appreciative of that. Um, this uh, is pretty exciting. Uh, this, this lives, uh, you'll see this in the measurement um, preferences in here. And you can see this in, inside the display here for the measurement preferences. This new display parallel to the screen uh, is, is on by default. And you also can choose a background color here. I've got this gray one uh, selected. These also show up in the customer defaults, right? So we can, we can see that there, set, set them there as well, site-wide if we want to. Okay. So those are the things that I wanted to talk about here for mass and measurement. And I uh, hope that's useful to you.